Welcome to episode number five of the Israel Innovation Podcast. Today we are here with Tovit Neiser from the company Nanofabrika. And I hope I'm saying it correctly. Yes. Hi, Tovit. So Hi. Um, I, I created a couple teasers for this episode because I was so excited about this technology. When I first saw you present it somewhere uh, at a meetup, uh, I thought, wow, this is a... Uh, I understand that this is going to change a lot of things in the future. So I will let you talk about your company. So please want to go ahead and tell us uh, what you do. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. What a cool place to be. Uh, so I'm Tovit. I'm the VP BZEV at Nano Fabrica. You can say it's really, really huge or big, but we're really, really tiny. That's, that's the thing about us. Um, we're manufacturing 3D printers for precision engineering. Meaning we're printing digitally tiny things, ultra precise, reaching one micron resolution over a relatively huge bill volume. And that's a secret. The combination between tiny and ultra precise and reaching 50 by 50 by 100 millimeters. And that's huge. So you can either print something very, very precise and small, or you can print many, many tiny ones and complete manufacturing of hundreds of parts that you need. And it's like a mass manufacturing tool done in and digitally, uh, digital technology. Now, how is this better than from what's going, like, wh how is this being done right now? Right, there are many uh, methods, manufacturing methods. You have uh, CNC, you have injection molding, uh, traditional methods, they're not digital. So that means it's usually slower, more expensive, and sometimes just impossible to make structures or designs, things that are unusual or complex, just digitally you can make them and design them, but then you can't really make them using traditional manufacturing methods. You just need one layer after another of different methods. And here you have it all in one. You have the, the, the fast manufacturing, um, the lead time is significantly shorter as opposed to the traditional ones. And you can prepare and design whatever your designers and engineers want to or dream about and aspire to, but have never had the, the opportunity to. And, and I think that's the way to go about it now. Okay, so so you're, and the, the solution comes in form of a machine, of a mm -hmm. 3D printer, correct? Um, correct. Okay, and this, this 3D printer could theoretically already replace, a, let's say, a whole um, uh, a whole street of uh, in the manufacturing process. If someone has like a CNC machine to, uh, well, you know, that mm -hmm. maybe they have an extrusion, then they had to CNC on it, then they um, then they combine it with a like a, with a mold with a you know molds for injection. So uh, okay, so th this can all be done with one machine basically, or part. The parts for it can you give us some examples like i mean i know there are probably thousands but like just so it's more tangible like an example of uh what could be manufactured and how much quicker it would be and and how much or right. why would it be better so so out of the sleeve just things that we know people need and ask for us from us um uh, microfluidics tiny nozzles, things that are going to medical irrigation, different uh, services, different markets. So you need tiny holes to uh, work through liquids, um, semiconductors, electronics, uh, O-rings. But I'll tell you the focus that we have, we saw that there's um, a glass ceiling to digital manufacturing, to additive manufacturing, 3D printing, and that's the materials. Whenever comes, someone came up to us and said, this is amazing, we couldn't manufacture these tiny or precise things or parts before, we printed something to them, for them, shipped it, and then they realized this is nice, but it stops at the prototyping area. It stops mm -hmm. at the lab. It's not going down to the manufacturing floor. And that, that's our aspiration, to make something for mass manufacturing, to, to actually bring out 3D printing from the lab or the makers or the nice to have cool guys playing around and making things to the actual manufacturing grounds of companies and factories and assembly lines. And, and that's why we understood that to bypass, bypass that problem of materials, 
we should make molds instead of injection molding waiting for the molds for a little time of six weeks or much more much mm -hmm. longer and pay so much could be fifteen thousand dollars and much more for ultra precise uh features so we make the mold our printer would print 3d print the mold the soft mold and then the final material would be injected onto that so we're eliminating the problem of material you can use your own very um tough material and it would last in the mold that's printed digitally and that's the way to kind of uh, enable anyone in any market use our technology it's no longer for a specific one because so many things are made through injection molding but the tools now right. can be made digitally very fast and cheaper wow now um the the if you, if you create some molds are they as long lasting as the hard mold as the steel molds that are from i mean are they comparable the or the answer i'm nodding because it's a very good question but the answer is no these are soft mold so for now our uh inner experiments that we do weekly uh last 40 shots our aim is to last 100 and then 1000 and that's possible so 1000 shots means that you can make 10,000 of these and then you get a real number that's useful. So after 1,000, they would not perform as well as needed. So you replace it and it's easier to replace. It's easier to maintain. You don't need a whole library of modes. These are uh, very easy to, to switch, easy to manufacture and fast. So it makes much more economical sense. In terms but of before before they degrade, they actually have the the same quality as a. That's the aim of the one thousand. Yeah, wh when I'm saying now the results are forty, these are forty that act the same, look the same, are the same quality. But then with time they deteriorate. So our aim is to reach the hundred and one thousand that would perform as as before, as the the previous ones. Right, because yeah, that's I guess that's what's needed to take it out of the prototyping stage into real manufacturing and to right. many different markets because now we're blocked people come up to us and ask for a biodegradable material and, and things that we cannot use on our technology and with our proprietary materials but with our new material that we're developing for that application of molding that would be possible and open up so many other applications and markets Great. Let, let's talk about material. Like, if, I think seven years ago, I had a startup, and we were uh, trying. Well, we were producing uh, some sort of bracelets, like silicon bracelets, for like similar to Fitbit. And I remember mm -hmm. at the time, that's that's when I first learned about uh, injection molding and how that works. And and I had a, I had a mold produced, and it was expensive. And and how, uh, but I remember back then looking into 3D printing. And back then, the materials that were available, I mean, anything that you printed in 3D with, you know, with the existing printers and the existing material was all, it was very hard. It wasn't even, you know, it wasn't even soft. And I mean, I know things have evolved immensely, but um, yeah. I guess like in, in my mind, there are still so many limits what you can actually do with 3D. Like for, it doesn't, um, I've, you know, I haven't really followed the industry anymore, so I don't know how, how um, so, so that's why, t tell me about like what material do you actually like how new is the material how innovative is that and, and you said you're developing your own material so what does that yeah what does yeah. that mean like what does that what is that able to do okay so we have our own proprietary materials developed here with our head of materials she's a she has a phd in chemistry uh we have uh, the basic ones abs like and polypropylene like that's what we use until we started this application of folding these are for printed parts for the um molding application we're working on a ceramic loaded material. These are ceramic particles going into uh, the photopolymer to enhance it and to enable many more, uh, a bigger variety of materials, final materials that would be injected onto our parts and also to last longer, many more shots, the 1000, which is the aim, and also uh, more severe uh, conditions mm -hmm. to raise up the temperature and the pressure. Uh, much more than that, I cannot reveal, but, but this is a strong material that would last and uh, cope with this application.
Right. And any any more jargon, I would have gone over my head anyway in terms of uh, <laughs> chemical <sorry>. knowledge. <laughs> but uh, no, 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 it was just right. Thank you. So uh, okay. So but your so your but your business is not in manufacturing anything for anyone because you're building the machines that are able to do that, right? Yeah. And we so, manufacture the tool that enables uh, the manufacturing of other things. Right. And these it okay. And, up the, the options to make things very, right. very now, now, looking at your market, like traditionally it would be manufacturing companies that are now creating molds or 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 producing anything really. So I guess uh, China is probably a big market um, or, you know, manufacturing industry. But but is it also are you also already eyeing industries like, um, uh, let's say, smaller companies that are that have production or uh, or ha or produce half products that uh, would you know would would use these machines in in their own uh, just for themselves like what's your the way we look at it it could be the the mold makers the companies that make the mold and then they would use us as a supplementary uh, service to to give um, faster faster results and shorten significantly shorter the lead times to the to their customers and also companies that use injection molding that need injection molding but sometimes outsource that they buy the tools or they make the tools but then they need something faster that can gap up that problem of timing uh, you said uh, you mentioned China so we also I I um, Germany Uh, and you mentioned small companies, so just saying is your and use your gone. Uh, Mittelstand, these are the companies that we're aiming at. They are huge companies, but they're unknown. They're called the hidden jewel in Germany. Manufacturing all traditional companies, usually with a revenue of more than $1 billion, dollars, but they're unknown. They're doing only O-rings, they're doing only ceilings of very specific pipes, but they're leaders, market leaders in their share. These are the companies that we would, uh, uh, that we're pursuing to give them that solution that helps them in the manufacturing process. It doesn't necessarily have to be Germany, but I'm just saying Mittelstand, other, it's not a huge conglomerate, but they're focused, highly focused on one, one thing that they need to do. Well, I have to thank you because I couldn't have explained Mittelstand any better than you did. <laughs> and uh, that's that's exactly my experience as well um yeah so uh i think there's a big market for that absolutely um yeah uh, anything let's see is there anything else you want to tell us specifically or maybe we can i can tell ahead. you something that very soon i think within the coming weeks we're gonna start nano talks which are uh, like few minutes short video uh, interviews with very senior people from the 3D printing and injection molding world worldwide. And these are going to be very interesting uh, interviews, short interviews about things general to do with the industry that you should follow up. And um, yeah, you should watch that. That sounds good. I put it on the screen here. <laughs> <laughs> This is the first appearance. You got it. That's a scoop. <laughs> right. And I under, but I understand you're now a Microsoft company? No. <laughs> uh, yes. I, I read something about that. <laughs> M12. Sorry? M12 backed us. That's their VC. Congratulations. They're, Thank you so much. That's, that's, a, uh, that's a very good well. sign. That's a very <laughs> good sign. Tovid, um, I almost ran out of questions. I'm, I'm sure there's many, we could probably talk for another hour. Um, but actually, let me see if there happen to be any comments. No, I, well, I'm, I'm pretty new to the live everything, so I haven't really uh, asked anyone to comment. Um, but thank you very much for coming on. This is exciting. And I will post all the links to your company and to you and whatever you want me to post. I they will be, all be on the description of this video. And uh, right. And I wish you lots of uh, lots of success. And thank you. In a year, I'll get you back on after you've been to Germany all the time, and then we can speak German. Just the skies need to open, and we'll be there. <laughs> They will open soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Great. Thank you. Bye. Bye.